The materials provided are informational and should not be relied upon as legal advice. Thank you. Okay, my story. I have been putting this off, I'll be honest. I, um, it's so hard to go back. Back to the time when I was a child, I was super vulnerable, when I was a victim, when I had no choices. Um, and my voice is already cracking because I'm like thinking about this stuff. Um, but you know, fast forward to now, I'm okay. And I made it through and I am super strong uh, because of all the things I went through in my life. So um, I'm sharing stories of other women, but I thought I needed to start with my story. So here it is. Um, so I was born in Kansas City, Missouri and to a loving mother and father. Um, unfortunately they conflicted and, um, decided that they were no longer going to get married. I think I was three or four. Um, so they got, they got divorced. Um, you know, I don't really remember life with them together. I only remember them being divorced. So not sure what kind of impact that first divorce had on me. Um, but my mom moved in with my grandparents. Um, my dad, I think he kept the house maybe. Um, and in that time I was with my grandparents. Um, I remember sleeping in the living room with my cousin and, um, I, I didn't realize this until I was older, but, um, my grandfather actually molested me in that living room. Um, I, it happened several times and my father became aware of it. Um, he, I wouldn't tell who it was and I didn't really remember until I was in my late, um, twenties. I had just kind of this flashback and, um, remembered everything that had happened. And, um, by that time he was dying or dead. I can't remember. I clearly didn't have a relationship with him. Um, so, you know, I had to move on and, um, forgive him for that, of course. Um, but early on, um, trust with men was broken. Um, trust with people that were close to me, um, people that were supposed to protect me and, and guide me and, and help shape my life. Um, I, like I said, I was really young. I was, I was probably four years old or, or five. So I don't remember much except for that vivid flashback that I can remember. Um, you know, I don't, I remember thinking, I don't know that this is right, but I don't know that this is wrong. Um, you know, that's, that's something that my counselors and I have talked about a little bit and, and it'll lead to some other things that happen in my life. But, um, after that, um, m both of my parents got remarried and, um, you know, both of them had a tum t tumultuous relationship. Um, my dad and my stepmom would argue and, and yell all the time and, um, were very passionate, um, and how they spoke to each other. My mom and my stepdad, for that matter, um, you know, my mom was dealing with some things with him, um, substance abuse. And, um, I think it led to, um, you know, some, some arguments and things that I can remember that were pretty traumatic in my life. Um, I will say that I played soccer and I sang, and I remember feeling like <clears throat> those two places were really my safe places. Um, the places that no one could touch me. Um, really, if I were to build a castle inside of my castle walls would be like a soccer field and maybe like a studio where, where I'm singing, um, because those were constants in my life. Um, so fast forward, um, I am in high school or entering high school and both of my parents get divorced again. So I've now been through three divorces by the time I was 15. Um, so what does a girl do? Um, Clearly, I did not believe in relationships. I didn't trust men. Um, so I'm, I'm this beautiful young girl. I'm, you know, being told by society that I should love men and I should, you know, be this certain type of woman. But at the same time, I'm super strong and I just do not trust them. So um, I had a relationship with a boy in high school for a couple years. And, um, I remember we had sex and I thought, this is why, um, he likes me. 
he likes me because he thinks I'm attractive and he wants to have sex with me. And um, feeling like maybe I wasn't worth anything more than that. And that's why men were attracted to me because of physicality. Um, I knew I had a lot more to offer, but I just, I think because of what had happened to me as a child and maybe what I had seen, um, you know, growing up, I, I just felt like this is what will get men to love me is if I, you know, be this person or, uh, portray more sex or try to be a little bit more, um, beautiful physically. Um, so of course I continued to play soccer and I went on to college and played in college and, um, I had a couple boyfriends and I, you know, anytime I would get close to love, I found myself making some kind of excuse for needing to get out of that relationship or somehow pushing those people away. Um, so maybe they would break up with me at that point. Um, so not healthy. Um, clearly I was not feeling worthy and, um, just kind of, you know, maybe down on myself. Um, so I remember, uh, this leads to the next event in my life. Um, I went to visit a friend, um, at her college and we started drinking at this fraternity house. And I remember having a beer or two. And the next thing I remember is, um, being in a room, um, a man's room and he was on top of me and I was like, no, um, please stop. And he said, um, let me just finish. And so then I started screaming and, and I knew this man, he looked familiar, but I was, I was really foggy. I was kind of out of it. Um, and thankfully someone heard me and came in and pulled him off of me. So, um, needless to say, I was raped. Um, I think, you know, I went to the hospital. I definitely had some, um, something in one of my drinks, um, that drugged me. And again, this theme of, of not really remembering, I don't know if that was, um, something I did or if I really didn't remember, but I remember obviously being there. I remember him, you know, waking up and I remember what happened then. But, um, I think your body does something to help you in these really painful moments, almost disassociate. And, um, I just remember not feeling a part of my body. Um, so, you know, I left college after that. I just was just totally, um, messed up because of it. And, um, I never did drugs or anything like that, but I definitely wanted to escape. I wanted to get away. I had an opportunity to sing. So I ran off to LA, um, and that didn't work. <laughs> Every girl in LA is pretty and they can all sing. And, um, that was a reality check for this Midwest girl. Like, oh, okay. Um, maybe I don't want to be famous. Um, maybe I, maybe this is not right for me. And, um, I really did truly miss my family. So I came back home, um, and I quickly fell in love. I met a man and we, uh, got married and had a baby. And once again, um, I was faced with the decision of, um, now for the first time divorcing on my own. Um, it, it didn't work out for us for, for multitude of reasons. Um, he is the father of my child, so I don't want to go into that. Um, we're friends now. Um, but I will say that period of my life was very painful. Uh, I know it was painful for him too. And we both learned a lot from that. So, um, you grow and you learn again, my circle. Um, I had these girlfriends that I had had since college, some since gosh, junior high and high school. And for the first time ever, I went out and got counseling on my own. I thought, you know what? Um, this is too much to bear. I have a young child. I don't have a job. I'm getting divorced. I don't even know like how to really pay my own bills on my own. Cause my husband, you know, helped me with that. Um, you know, all of these things that women face when they first get divorced, it, it's like so overwhelming. Um, little things like, like, <laughs> like who's going to mow my lawn? <laughs> um, I know that sounds terrible. And now where I'm at now, that's crazy. But, uh, I just remember being like, you know, I, 
there were things about my husband that I just maybe didn't see. Like he was taking the trash out and he was um, providing comfort um, on some of those days that were hard for me. But also on the other end of the spectrum, uh, we were fighting a lot. So, um, you know, I, I thought, okay, the, he's a certain type of man and clearly that type of man doesn't work for me. So I need to go to the other end of the spectrum. And I did. Um, I dated a couple men. I, I would say I still really felt like men only liked me for my physicality. I, I wasn't in touch with um, them maybe liking me for more or thinking I'm intelligent or wanting to hear my stories or wanting to, um, you know, sit and chat at night. Um, so the next person, you know, I found, um, we met at a gym and, um, it was kind of fast and furious. And I, I, I just felt like this is the guy, like he is the total opposite of my last husband. Um, so this is going to work and, you know, kind of just like grabbed onto him right away. And, um, you know, we got married and it only lasted almost three years. So, um, I think pretty quickly I realized this isn't going to work for me. Um, maybe don't go from one end of the spectrum all the way to the other. I think maybe somewhere in the middle for me, um, would have been a lot better, but, um, again, my circle of friends, um, you know, some of them actually were going through divorces, um, at the same time. So, Ironically, um, we had a lot to talk about and they were going through some things, um, maybe even like abuse and, and some things, some horrific things. Um, uh, I know one friend of mine was married to a narcissist and just some of the stories that she would tell me, I was just like, wow, um, either I'm lucky.